Good afternoon and welcome. Let me check that mic first. Okay. Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily chat. Um, this is episode, yes, we've broken that milestone, 501. Uh, episode 501. And the topic today is actually a continuation of yesterday's topic, which is the um, masculiniz- masculiniz- masculinization. I got to get the word right. The masculinization of women, part two. Part one was yesterday, part two today. So I'll get to that in a second. So thanks for joining me. Welcome to my broadcast. Before I get to my topic, let me introduce myself and what this is all about. Uh, my name is Barry Selby. I am a best selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And I help strong, successful women. I find I support strength. <laughs> I just totally messed everything up. Let me start again. Hi, I'm Barry Selby. This is, <laughs> this is my daily chat. Um, I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and I help strong, successful women create and find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which is what inspired these talks that I started almost a year and three quarters ago, something like that, called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart, or Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And today's topic is part two of a, start, a topic that hit me yesterday, and of course yesterday was episode 500, so it's a big milestone, and I was in the middle of an event that I spoke about um, what I'd heard there from one of my friends who was leading it about the um, masculiniz- masculinization of women. And so I want to speak to that. And yesterday I talked about more about business and about the lifestyle, the culture. Today I'm going to talk about relationships because that's the, that's the focus. So, hi Donna, hi from New York. Well, welcome to my broadcast. I'm glad you're here. So the issue at hand, the challenge at hand, to put it simply, is that Many women, let me, let, me, let me cliff note yesterday first to give you the context. Our culture has been bent towards a male way of doing things. And when women entered the workforce, as in the 60s or so, they took on the role of being like men to succeed in business in their own way. And I said, right now, there's still very few female entrepreneurs that are, and it's not only entrepreneurs versus employees, Women being in their feminine whilst being in business is a very, it's a, it's a hard mix right now. People are still figuring that out. Women are learning how to do this, and thankfully, more and more women are stepping into that role of being feminine and in business at the same time, usually as entrepreneurs, because they have more freedom there than versus in a corporation. Anyway, I want to speak to the dating, relating, mating conversation, because that's, that, that's, an, that's a um, alliteration that a friend of mine put together, and I like that, that terminology. Ladies, when you're in your masculine, acting like the men, then you become a hunter in the sense of how the hunter-gatherer conversation or, or archetypal description is written. Because most, um, let me put some, context, some stuff in context. Going back in ancient times, this is I'm using um, Alison Armstrong's teaching to relay this message. There was the hunter... Um, the other part of that there was a gatherer protector which is the feminine and the masculine was the hunter there was something else there will come back to me so the hunter was great at going out and, and pursuing the prey capturing and bringing it back and I said this a few times about how the challenge of being the masculine is we are very good at one thing at a time laser focused go for the goal directional focused extremely good at that linear focus but you talk about something over there we miss it completely so target acquisition and getting the target, as in hunting the the prize game for the for the tri- for the tribe, easy. Focus on that. But we had to go in hunting parties because if we were out hunting for our prey, we wouldn't know if there was a prey if there was something a predator behind us pursuing us. We wouldn't know that. So hunting parties were designed to protect us, so we could actually do the job. The feminine, the women, in ancient times, using that terminology, were the hunt were the gatherer protectors. You know, it used to be called hunter-gatherer, but really, really it was more than that. It was gatherer-protector, not just gatherer. So their role a lot of times in the feminine, because women have a much more, in the, when they're in the feminine, have a much more um, widespread spatial awareness, shall we say, that when they are, sorry, when they were, in that context, taking care of the kids and the village livestock and everything else, they could keep a very good awareness, almost like a, um, like a scanner of seeing what's going on around them. So the women would be out there, you know, picking the, the fruit, the berries and other things they've been harvesting stuff in and bringing it into the, into the village. But they have a widespread field of vision to keep, you know, 17 kids running around, predators going around the perimeter where the hens were, and all that stuff they'd be able to protect. It's a powerful skill that the feminine has. 
that many women have forgotten they have? So how does that relate to dating, you might be thinking? It's a good question, because I'm trying to remember the answer myself. So fast forward to the modern times. The hunter, gatherer, protector energy are still within the archetypes. And it's embedded in the masculine energy and the feminine energy. However, the masculine and feminine energies are not gender specific, literally. Generally they are, but not specifically, meaning that men generally will lean towards the masculine side of the spectrum, but not always. In fact, not 99%, less than that. And most women will, will tend towards the feminine when they're awoken or awake into that state and understanding. But when it comes to dating, because most women, most people date in a very business-like fashion, that's our problem right there, by the way, it seems like courtship's gone out the window. It's all dating now, which basically is a hunting practice. You know, the dating apps are set up so that somebody who's going to the dating apps is scanning through targets, picking the one they want. That's a masculine way of doing things. So ladies, when you go in the apps to do that, just to be aware, not, not right or wrong, just be aware that you're doing the same thing. You're being a hunter. Men at work for you the best way. Second part is when you're out in at happy hour or out socializing in clubs, a lot of women go out in a very predatory hunter mindset. They're actually looking themselves through the laser focus the way the masculine does. And so they're choosing their target, as men do, but women do it too. And it's a dysfunctional way of being because the reality is when you do that, the only men that you actually get will, do, will be either competitors, because they're trying to do the same thing, or beta males, or I should say men who are more in the feminine because they'll be the target you're actually aiming for without realizing it. I was one of those, so I know what it feels like for another time. <laughs> so the paradigm was, the paradigm in the dating field is that when women and men are both hunters, they're doing this. They're basically competing and actually battling each other. And if you want a healthy relationship, this is not the approach I recommend. And as I work with women, I'll speak to the women because that's generally who watches the broadcast for you ladies out there, because men definitely step up their game, and I wouldn't call it a game even, but their approach to really be much more in a place that is the hunter with respect. Because so many men are in the dating game that are hunting without any respect. They're not be ended up, they don't have any courtship skills, they're not learning how to be gentlemen, they don't have respect for the women. It's it's a mess on their side of things. But I'll get to that later. Speaking to the women who are being, mascul being um, masculine, masculinated, <laughs> not emasculated, but mascul masculinized, messing that word completely, but you get my point. So many women are doing that still, and the challenges in their relationships are suffering because of it. Because again, when you're emasculine, you're going to either date other men, men who are in their masculine, so you battle with each other, or you're going to be with men who are going to try and push you down. I'm adding to what I said before, so there's actually four things, not two. So in your relationships, ladies, when you're in your masculine, you're going to end up meeting men who are either going to compete with you and fight with you. You're going to meet men who want to dominate you to prove they're stronger than you, so they'll push you down, which is not what you want either. You'll, meet, you'll be with men who are beta males because they don't want to fight you on it and they'll let you take the lead, which is you know fine for a period of time, I know from experience, again, another time. There's a fourth one, which is basically that you're going to find or have a man who will um, basically he'll run away. He won't face you. Because most men don't realize, and it's their realization, that when you're in your masculine, ladies, you're actually out of alignment. And a man who gets this and understands this will stand in his masculine so firmly, so firmly, that you'll feel it. And when you feel it, if you are aware, this is, again, this is awareness conversation here, you'll realize that what you're feeling is something you can trust. See, a man who stays present, who is in his full masculine presence, is something that is like, it, it's stronger than concrete. It's undeniable, it is rock solid, and you can trust it. And ladies, I know you want a man you can trust. And it's that quality that makes him trustworthy. A man who can, tries to convince you he's trustworthy isn't. A man who demonstrates presence is. That simple. And when he is in that place of depth and trustworthiness because his presence is so strong what will happen is you may start feeling a sense of relief because you'll realize one because you don't have to work so hard because he's already holding the space for you secondly you don't need to wear that role anymore because he's got it covered for you and third 
you discover a whole um, blossoming experience of the feminine, which is naturally within you. And for a lot of women, being the feminine is a rare experience because of the way they live their lives. So when you have that experience, there's a shift that happens between him holding that space so solidly that you can move into your feminine with grace, ease, effortlessness, and almost falling back into it with such gentleness because you go, oh, I get this now. This is good news. Because that's the relationship ideal that I recommend and coach my clients to have and that, frankly, I know you want. Because you want to be in a relationship where you're fighting with each other every time, there's something dysfunctional there. Oh, I think you're clear on that. There's a few things I want to offer, but I want to give it to you now. But the recognition is that the paradigm we've come from, just to flip, switch back to the beginning, or get back to the beginning for a second, since the 60s, as I mentioned in yesterday's broadcast, the sexual revolution, the women's liberation movement, the feminist movement, all these different labels, women learned how to act like men. My message, my coaching, my support is to helping you remember to act like women. And I mean this in a complimentary way, not a, not a derogatory way. You ladies, women out there, living your lives powerfully and fully, absolutely you can keep doing that and learn how to own your feminine at the same time so that when you're in the world, you're making a mark that is a feminine established understanding that men get. Yesterday I talked about more about big vision stuff. I'm talking more about relationship this one. I know there's something going to come up next, probably tomorrow for the part three of this. This is about the future. So that's a seed for later on. I'll talk about it tomorrow. But in this context, I want to just say to you, if you're a woman who has been challenged by this, by not being able to get into your feminine or not find a way of having a healthy relationship, I invite you to have a, talk, have a conversation with me. Uh, one, because I know what it feels like to be out of alignment. And two, I, am, I do still my masculine more often, in fact, with my clients all the time. So you can feel that. That's two. Third, um, I, may have something can, I may have some ideas that can help you. It's not always easy, I understand, and trust a man takes practice. That's one reason I, I'm a man coaching women is because they get to practice with me energetically feeling a masculine presence before they go out in the world and meet some men out there who may or may not fit that. That's one reason why I do what I do. Because some people say to me, why are you coaching women? You're a man. It's like, exactly. That's the way I do what I do. So that's why I, th I feel like the more that you learn from men who are in their masculine, the more powerfully you can trust that, the more easy it's going to be for you to stay in your feminine and actually expand your feminine to own the power that's in there. Because the other part about being your feminine, just to give this piece of the puzzle too, is that when you're in your feminine, your power transcends that, transcends that of the masculine. That's still in the cat out of the bag, as it were. The secret is that, ladies, when you're in your feminine, you're more powerful than you are in your masculine. And in fact, when you're in your feminine, you're more powerful than we are in our masculine. Now, we may be immovable, but the force you bring is nature herself. So just remember this, ladies. Your power is magnificent. Your power is massive. And your power in your feminine, again, is massive, is magnificent, is what's needed more than ever now going forward. I'll talk about that more tomorrow, and I think I've got a future cast coming forward. I think I'm feeling it, but I'll talk about it tomorrow. Um, I hope this is making sense to you. And this is Lanny again. I do invite you to watch yesterday's broadcast. That was more about business relationship challenges. This is more about romantic relationship challenges. If you're stuck and want some help in this area, reach out to me. I'll put some links in the comments um, of one, my program, Attract the Man You Want, because that might help you get some clarity. Two, I'll put my self-love practice in there. I actually, actually sold a bunch of this weekend at the event. A lot of women wanted that, and I know women need this. Because it may help you just to retune, reconnect back into your own self-love and support, because that's where you may be lacking. So that may help you with that. And third, I'll put the link to a discovery session with me so you can find out how to work with me. And I can maybe give some guidance in a little chat. So um, again, this is part two of three, I believe. Again, I didn't know it was going to happen more than that. But yesterday was part one. This is part two. Tomorrow will be part three. Does it make sense to you for questions about this? Please put in the comments below. I do welcome that, and I will respond in the comments when I sign off. Um, I hope this, this lands for you. This, this is a big topic. That's why it's right now two broadcasts and a third one tomorrow. But the shift that you can make when you're on your feminine in a relationship is going to be a game changer, just like it was yesterday with business. With relationships, it also is as well a needed requirement for the world to up-level, and you ladies are a key part of that. So I'll be back in tomorrow with what feels like a future cast. I'm already feeling it bubbling up, but it's not relevant here. I'm saving it for tomorrow. And if you have any questions, comments, please put them below. And again, I'll put the links, as I mentioned, in the, in the comments afterwards. Um, homework. I've got to give some homework. I feel like homework's brewing. 
ladies, if you're watching to the end of this, your homework assignment, if you choose, is to connect to yourself and feel in where the feminine within you resides. I'm not going to give you any clues, this is up to you, but to just tune into your own internal workings and your internal energies and feel where your feminine resides. And then, this is the key, feel inside to where your masculine resides, because it's in there as well. And I'm not saying, and nowhere in the broadcast I've said, you need to get rid of your masculine, but it's about where you reside more fully. Because when you start to understand in your physiology where your masculine and feminine live, you'll have a way to actually access which one you want to stay in. Because you're going to need to be in your masculine at certain points, but more often than not, your feminine is where, it resi where your power resides. So that's your homework, is to start doing some self-investigation to see where you reside. So with that, I wish you a pleasant evening. Um, men who are watching this, I hope you got some value from this as well. Your homework assignment <laughs> is to start noticing where your masculine resides, because for most men, we've been in macho too long, or being a beta, that's, that, that's the two choices seem to be happening a lot. Find out where your masculine resides, connect into it to yourself, because when you connect into it, really connect into it, it will change your life as well. So with that, I thank you for watching. You've all got your homework. Go forth and play. I'll see you again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time for part three. Take care. I'll see you soon. Bye.